Broadcasting live from an undisclosed location, this is the TC MMA Podcast with your host, Chris Cross. <laughs> Dana White Privilege. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Dana White Privilege. Privilege. Pri- 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 privilege. Dana White's Contender Series is back for week three, and already eight UFC contracts handed out by Dana White. And you know, you figure there's, what, 10 weeks, five fights each week, 50 fights, we're going to see 35 to 40 fighters uh, land UFC contracts by the time it's all said and done. And every year about this time, the entire landscape changes. You have guys being cut from the UFC in order to make room for the new fighters that are being signed. And it's, it's always uh, very interesting. But one thing I find the most interesting, one thing I do a lot, is I get onto Google and I just type in Dana White and I click the news button. And it's always some of the best articles because guys, Dana White's name is so big, guys are always coming after him. For example, Francis Ngannou disputes White's claim he ducked John Jones. Jake Paul, Dana White scared to co-promote and make John Jones versus Francis Ngannou. Right? So, I mean, it's just up and down the board. Kyle Barajo says he wants a meeting with President Dana White. You don't schedule a meeting with the president. The president schedules a meeting with you. That's how it works. So when I read these articles, I, I just die laughing. Who knows if Francis Ngannou ducked John Jones? We don't know. We just know the fight never happened. And it should have happened. And it would have been, you know, at, at the time, John Jones would have to fight Ngannou to get the belt. I don't know if he has a belt that he actually wants to fight him. Right? I mean, he wants to fight Stipe Miocic, for crying out loud, who hasn't had a fight in, what, two or three years? So who knows who ducked too? It's just interesting, the headlines. And Jake Paul saying, you know, Dana White doesn't want to co-promote the fight. He tried to promote the fight. He wanted it to happen. He couldn't get the guys to sign on the dotted line. Now you want him to, you know, the whole point of the UFC is that they're not trying to co-promote. We don't want to become boxing. We don't want to have WBC, WBA, WBO, WBS, <laughs> whatever, whatever all the names are, right? We want... One, that we know if you're the champion of the UFC, you're the champion of the world. So Dana White is not going to co-promote, and I'm with him 100%. And Kyle Barajo called for a meeting with Dana White, probably because he wants to say, hey, I want to fight for the title. But you're in the middleweight division, dude. There's a lot of guys want to fight for the title. The division is deep now. A Mavov has more of a right than you do right now. He's above you in the rankings. That's another guy that Drakus hasn't fought yet. So there's all these things going on with Dana White. He's always in the news. You got to love it. But listen, we're here for the Contender Series. Before we get into it, let's take a look so far. I mean, these are the guys that have gotten in uh, and have signed contracts. You got one flyweight in Kavanaugh. You got two bantamweights, Cody Haddon and Cortavius Romius. You got a featherweight in Jose Delgado. You got a welterweight in Andreas Gustafsson. You got a middleweight in Mansur Abdul Malik, light heavyweight Bruno Lopez, and heavyweight Rizvan Kuniev. No women yet. That'll come. But the UFC is filling out roster spots like crazy through the contender series, and this list will only grow. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to monitor uh, as more and more guys get contracts. But it's always interesting to me to see what division. Uh, is beefed up the most. Like, obviously, they need Bantamweight fighters because last week you had two guys get in and one guy didn't get a finish, which is rare that they get a, a decision win and they get into the UFC. It happens, but not often. But listen, let's, uh, without further delay, let's get into the first fight of the night. It's going to be a good one, right? You got flyweight division fighters. You already had one guy signed in his division. You got Duffy, who's undefeated at 7 0, taking on. Uh, Pisanini, if I even say that right. 
I'll probably jack that name up all day. He's also undefeated at 6-0, and and these are guys we don't know as well, so it's harder to make predictions, but so far we've been pretty good, like 6 or 7 out of 10. Uh, we'll take it, but let's get into Jack Duffy uh, first his opponent right now in the flyweight division at Dana White's Contender Series. First fight of the night, week three, you got Jack Duffy taking on Nick Piccanini, if I said that right. Now, Duffy, 7-0, and Piccanini, 6-0, and and, you know, we don't know a lot about these guys other than Duffy is 28 and Nick is 27. Now, Jack Duffy, American, fighting out of uh, El Dorado Hills, California, in his seven wins. Remember, he's undefeated. He's got two KOs, four submissions, one decision. This guy's fighting out of Uriah Faber's A1 combat. So we've seen several guys come out of here and into the contender series, which means they're one fight away from potentially getting in the UFC. Now, Pic uh, Piccanini... In his six wins, he's got five submissions. So that's incredible. One decision, no losses. He's fighting at a Fury FC. Uh, he fought at 72, 83, and 92, finishing all uh, by submission. Two arm triangles and one rear in the last three. Uh, about seven rounds of action. So this guy's, you know, he's he's had some fights, even going four rounds. In his last fight, he's very capable of winning. So it really comes down to the takedown defense of his opponent. And, you know, when you got a guy at this level that has submission ability, I got to believe that they're going to win by submission. I can't imagine their opponent, in this case, Jack Duffy, has great takedown defense at this point. I think he's got a little ways to go. Look for Nick Piccasini. Again, if I said that right, we'll get to know his name, especially if he wins. But we'd like him to win this thing in an American versus American battle to move to 7-0, and likely by submission. Flyweight division. Dana White's contender series. Yeah, it can't be Piccasini. It's got to be Piccinini, Piccanini, something along those lines. But listen, as I said, we're going to get to learn this guy's name if he gets a win and if he's fortunate uh, to get the contract. Give this guy a contract, bro. <laughs> Yeah, someone's got to get it. Someone's got to get a contract. But they need a finish. And to me, it really don't matter who wins. I just want to see finishes at the Contender Series. But that's who we'll take in this one. Now, uh, as we continue to march forward up and down this card, we got another big one in Fight 4. This one uh, will be a Bantamweight division fight. So you're seeing a lot of fights at the lower weight classes already. You got Wellmaker, 7-0. and First Bramhall, who's 13-2. and And these fights always interest me because when you got an undefeated guy with like 5 to 8 wins, and then you got another guy who's got 15 to 20 fights, but they only lost twice, you know, it seems like to me it could really go uh, either way. So let's get into that one right now. In the Bantamweight division at Dana White's Contender Series, you got Malcolm Wellmaker taking on Adam Bramhall. So this should be an interesting fight. Lower weight class, 135 pounds. Wellmaker 7-0. He's from USA. Bramhall from England, 13-2. So he's got more experience. But Wellmaker's undefeated. Bramhall, one inch taller at 5'10". Both guys are 30. Now Wellmaker in the seven wins, three KO, two submissions, two uh, decisions, his last fight uh, at National Fighting Championship 161, uh, he won by TKO. He also fought at a conflict MMA, so he's definitely on the regional circuit. Now, Bramhold in his 13 wins, 6 KOs, 4 submissions, look out. But he was KO'd and submitted uh, once apiece. His last loss, though, wow, way back in 2017. Since then, he's run off about Eight, nine, ten victories, somewhere around there. Fighting out of caged steel uh, for the last, you know, since 2019. Um, and it looks like he's finishing everybody except his last fight against Daniel Mello was a decision last September. So it's been a while since he's been in the octagon. This is going to be an interesting fight. Wow. Big time fight. Uh, but I'm going to have to lean towards Adam Bramhold even though I like to go with the American in this one. I just think Bram Hall has got too much experience. He's has it lost in a in seven years. So he's obviously getting better and better every time out. I just can't see Wellmaker getting the job done here. You never know. Big opportunity for both guys, but Bram Hall has shown over the last 
uh, seven years that he's he's a winner. So I like him to win this thing and move to 14 and two, and get the contract here, bantamweight division, in my opinion, at Dana White's contender series. So there's the answer to that question. I mean, it's real simple. We're going with the guy with more experience. Yeah, well, maker seven and zero, but he's got more to prove. And to me, I think Bram Hall has been uh, around enough that he's going to get the victory here. I mean, he's he's going to dominate this fight. Give this guy a contract, bro. Yeah, give him a contract when he finishes the fight. Yes! Yes! I say give it to him. I'm not the one handing out contracts to Dana White. So as far as I'm concerned, everybody gets a contract. <laughs> if they win, you know, and it should almost be set up that way, but I do like the way it's set up. Like, there's five fights and, you know, there's four finishes. Those guys are going to get the contract. That's what it comes down to. So you're not guaranteed just because you win, you're getting a contract. you gotta, you got to win and be impressive. As we saw uh, Torres Finney last week didn't get the contract, but he didn't get a finish. And he spoke out. Dana White said he would basically, you know, for lack of better words, get demolished in the UFC. So he couldn't get one. All right, let's jump into fight three. Things are starting to get interesting now, right? They get better as you move your way up. Middleweight division fight, big guys here. Marco Tulio, 11 and 1. First two close, 6 and 2. Brazil versus France. I can't remember who I took in this, but I'm going to say I took Tulio because he's from Brazil, but you never know. I don't like 6 and 2. I don't like that at all. But let's get into it right now. In the middleweight division at Dana White's Contender Series, you got Marco Tulio, Brazilian, coming in 11 and 1, taking on Matthew Duclos, who comes in at 6 and 2. He's fighting out of France. Duclos, three inches taller at 6 3. Now, Tulio has been here before, so we know he's 29, 75 inch reach, fights right handed. In his uh, fought in Contender Series last year, and landed 3.2 significant strikes per minute. Not bad, not great though. Uh, and also had two takedowns in that fight. It was a unanimous decision victory. Okay. And on top of that, you know, this guy's won like seven fights in a row. After the contender series last year, he came back in January at LFA 175 and beat uh, Semi Dos Santos by KO. So KO gets a minute in this one for sure. Now, do close in his six wins, five KOs, won one by decision. Uh, in his two losses, he was finished both times, KO and submission. Last loss in 2022 at Bellator 280 since then he's won four in a row. Fighting at a, a hexagon MMA. So, and in the last three fight, well, last four, he all finished his opponent by TKO. So, he obviously has the ability to win, but I just think Tulio is going to be too much here. Number one, he's Brazilian, and he's 11-1. So, I know he's got a takedown game. He's got to land more significant strikes. Uh, he's got to overwhelm Duke close in this one to make a point and uh, hopefully put him away. By KO, and I think that's what's going to happen. You know, the ground game is great, and once you get in the UFC, you can do what you want as long as you win. Uh, this time around, he knows he's got to get in, so he's going to get a win by finish, hopefully by TKO to move in, move to 12 and one. That's my opinion here. Middleweight division, uh, Dana White's contender series. Listen, I, I stick with something that's worked with me, worked for me for a long time, and that's if I'm unsure, which I am in this fight. I'm a little. It seems like it could go either way. I'm going with the Brazilian. It usually pays off. I'd say 70 to 80% of the time, if it's a close fight, the Brazilian's getting a win. And that's really what it comes down to. And you can argue how I make my picks or whatnot, but the bottom line is, is it usually works. No point to change, uh, change up strategies now. We got Marco Tulio going to 12-1, and one, and plus it's an easy one. He's 11-1, and one, so if it is a close fight, you got to go with the fighter with the better record and the competition he's faced. Now, in the next one, a featherweight division fight, 145 pounds. This is a guy we've heard of before because he's been at the Contender Series, I'm pretty sure. Bogdan Grad. I thought he was a UFC fighter, but he's not. He's 13-2. and two. Taking on Michael Aswell, who's 9-1. and one. So this is an interesting one, right? Austria versus USA, and Grad's got the experience fighting here before. So, you know, it's going to be a tough one. Let's get into it right now in the featherweight division at Dana White's contender series your co-main event you got Bogdan Grad a name we've heard before he's been here before lost to Tom Nolan the first time out takes on Michael Aswell so Grad 13 and 2 Aswell 9 and 1 this is uh, Austria versus USA both guys 5'8 
Grad is 28, so he's in the prime window now. As well, just 23 years old, he's getting an early start. That's good. Both guys 70 inch reach. Now in Grad's uh, lone fight, he landed just 1.5 significant strikes per minute. Not very good. But in 13 wins, he's got eight KOs, three submissions, and two decisions. He did lose once by KO and once by uh, decision. Tom Nolan KO'd him last year uh, at the Contender Series. It's just over a year. But since then, he came back and won uh, two fights at CFS 14 and CFS 15. This is a place that he's used to fighting out of. So he just continues uh, to get more and more experience. Now, Aswell, on the other hand, is fighting out of Houston, Texas. In his nine wins, five KOs, four decisions. He lost once by decision. That was back in 2023. Since then, he's won two in a row. Fighting for Fury FC. Uh, he beat Josh Altum by TKO and KO, KO Nate Richardson. So this is going to be an interesting decision, or a fight, excuse me. Um, I'm leaning towards Bogdan Grad uh, simply because he has the experience in this setting, right? He did it last year. Tom Nolan KO'd him. Well, Tom Nolan uh, is now fighting in the UFC. So that's why this guy gets another opportunity. And before that fight last year, he was 13-1, right? So if he can't win this one, he's likely not getting into the UFC. So I think Bogdan Grad is going to come in and pour his heart and soul into this fight. He knows he has to. I don't expect him to be careful. I expect him to go for it. But he's got to get better at striking. And if he's going to go in for takedowns, he's got to land them. So it's hard to say which one will work. I think he's got both angles if he chooses to take them. We'll see. But Bogdan Grad is going to win this fight just on sheer uh, experience to move to 14-2 and two here, in my opinion. Featherweight division. Dana White's contender series. Yeah, I mean, and this one's simple to me because he's been here before, right? I mean, yeah, he lost to Tom Nolan, who's a respectable fighter now. And it's like, so you get another opportunity. And... You got to make it pay off. Now, Aswell's going to come in and not make it easy. This guy wants a contract, too. You know, and the winner of this fight, for sure. Give this guy a contract, bro. Should get the contract. I think this is one where it may not necessarily be a finish uh, to get the contract, but I still expect a finish because both guys understand uh, what's happening, right? They understand what they got to do. Now, middleweight division, main event. You got Puliev eight and two, taking on Liam Anderson six and two. Russia versus USA, and interesting main event when both guys got two losses in in ten fights or less. But these are big guys, and you expect them to have power at 185. You know, like if I was a UFC fighter, I'd have to drop 15, 20 pounds to make middleweight, but that would be my weight division. I look at some of these guys, and they're huge. I'm like, man, I'll, be, I'll get crushed. These guys are big at 185, man, and they have power. So I expect this one to be uh, a great fight that doesn't get outside the first round. But let's get into it right now. In the middleweight division at Dana White's Contender Series, you get Andre Puliev taking on Liam Anderson. This is your main event once again. Pooley have eight and two. Anderson six and two. So both guys, you know, have won the majority of their fights, but have two losses on their resume. Let's begin with uh, Andre Pouliev. Guy's twenty six years old. We don't have a height anywhere on this guy. In his eight wins, he's got five KOs, two submissions, one decision. He lost once by KO and once by decision. Most recently, fighting out of. Uh, Flamenco Fighting Championships 9, you know, so not a, a big promotion to say the least. He's won four in a row, though. Last loss was March of 2023. Liam Anderson, a.k.a. White Widow, in his six wins, two KOs, four submissions. So when he wins, he finishes people. Okay, much like Pouliev, Anderson has lost once by KO and once by decision. His last loss uh, was five fights ago. So these guys are almost exactly the same, except the difference is Anderson is fighting out of LFA in three of the last four fights and uh, has won all of them. His, you know, his one loss, or his last loss, was in July of 2021 in Cage Fury Fighting Championship. So the guy has some experience coming in. That lets me know, you know, I like to see him more active, but at the same time, he's got more experience in the promotions that he's fighting in. Now, Puliev is Russian. 
So he's had some good competition as well. Even those regional circuits are pretty good, right? Whoever comes out of them ends up being really, really good. But I'm just not sure Puliev is going to be the guy coming out. I think Liam Anderson in this one uh, is going to win. Will he dominate? I don't know, right? But I like the fact that he's fighting out of LFA and uh, Cage Fury. So to me, that gives him more experience. He's got the edge here. And because of that, uh, in my opinion, I believe he's going to win this fight uh, to move to 7-2. and two. Will he get the contract? That will depend on if he gets the finish. At the time which his fight takes place, you're going to have one or two middleweights already signed. So Liam Anderson has got to do a good job in this fight. And he will. Middleweight division. Dana White's contender series. So there you go. It's going to be a good one, right? I'm really not sure either guy should get the contract, but the bottom line is is at least they've they've put together some wins. They're they're you know, these are both both guys that started out their career slow and have picked it up, right? So when when I look at the records eight and two and six and two, I say, I don't I mean, really? We're gonna have a nine and two guy or a seven and two guy in the UFC? I mean that's okay. You'd like a little more experience, but the bottom line is it's what have you done for me lately? And both of these guys have done some. So the winner deserves to get into the UFC. And that rounds it out for week three. And then we got off Saturday and then another. We got two contender series in a row before another UFC event. So this thing is getting ready uh, to be front and center. And these next two weeks are going to be fireworks for real. Now listen, do me a favor. You see we're, we're doing all the contender series picks. We're doing all the fight night and pay-per-view picks we're staying busy we're bringing you uh, to the best of our ability the predictions you saw we went nine and two last week we had a very good week do me one favor hit that subscribe button that's all you got to do make sure you get access and notifications for all the videos uh that we put out but for now that'll do it this is your boy chris cross hope you have a great day and god bless as always peace